I got that. Bill now. was always bragging. In fact, he left with the shortest <laughs> You don't even get the internet. You know? yeah, exactly. Something exactly. Yeah, you don't even get the internet. Yeah, Jeff Dubb. They have that in the, the State Fair and Coliseum. Yeah. So what do they do? They put, uh, oh, I know, it's called the Hippodrome. It used to be. And they won't call it down a big old track. <laughs> that's, I'm sitting going, well, that's mostly <laughs> sawdust in there. You know? We clear out all the sawdust. Uh, of saying good morning to the dad there. Well, that's how those things yeah, are, though. It's like wrestling I mean, they, they go around and they build that, and you have it here this week. You don't have places where it's set up all the time. Yeah. Here I thought he was going to cement it all out. Oh. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Oh, yeah. Good. I met a meeting. Do you need me? Okay, we'll talk to you later. Get my son in law off the advertising. That was father in law. He always calls me and tells me to lie again. That's good. I didn't hear that. Give my son in law free advertising. He sets it sets it towards the camera. Maybe I can make a little extra money doing that. Wear some logo on my That's right. Well, that's the part that'll come down to eventually. How do you think we're going to get the extra Yeah, right. What are you asking? My son in law. We're going to go out and sell sponsorships. Sell advertising space. They work for commercial. He owns his own house. They do commercial advertising or insulating. Did you have a good holiday? Yeah, like they're, they're yeah. insulating the yeah. state <coughs> DOT <coughs> building. Oh, you so we got played in Disneyland. We just had a lot of fun. We had a way home today. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, she's in shock. Like, you know what? The, tomorrow. Two of them together. Put the two of them together. They are the best. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be real honest now. And they leave it we have resources. We, we know people like to do that. Okay. We've got people. So they people. make sure they're getting better so that uh, yeah. Yeah. they sleep all the way home. Yeah. Yeah. So are you doing anything tonight? Like and how many hour drive? They won't sleep all the way. Well, they won't sleep all the way. She says on the way home it's a whole different world. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 That was pretty funny. Yeah, that was so you yeah, you from Philadelphia. Good morning, all. I'd like to call the final oh, meeting of the 2015 yeah. Morrison County Board of Commissioners to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Happy morning, New Year. Mr. Chair. Good morning, Mr. Chair. All right. Uh, Approval of the County Board Minutes. So moved, Mr. Chair. Have a motion? Do I have a second? second? And a second. Further discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Any ad additions or deletions to the agenda? There are none. All right. So, so moved, moved, Mr. Chair. I have second. A and a second. Further discussion? Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Public health report. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. 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 Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Michelle Warburg, <clears throat> my Michelle. sanitarian from our environmental health department. Hello, Michelle. How are you today? Here to, here to answer questions, <laughs> just in case. All right, so let's make sure we have the same one. So the first is to approve the abstract of establishment license as attached um, for the 2016 food, beverage, and lodging establishments in Morrison County. Are there any questions? Any questions about any of these Mr. Gentlemen? Chair? Yes, Commissioner Jolinski. I'll, I'll make the motion with it, but, and, but I need to ask a question at the same time. These are all paid. The taxes are all up to date on, on this first batch here that we're... Okay. Yes, okay. and I will make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. And a second. Further discussion? Having heard it, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, Katie. Yep. And the second is to approve um, the following 2016 annual establishment license contingent upon paying their full 2015 real estate taxes. Uh, so you'll see the establishment names up there, Western Liquors, Big Adventures, Sev's, Jordy's, Trailside, and Time Out Bar. Just a small correction to that, I don't, um, the Western Liquors as of yesterday Closing time has have have paid their license or their right. their taxes. So oh, okay. we are waiting on the and, the and they have to pay them prior by to, today. Well, four thirty this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So. Okay. Yeah. So, Mr. Chair, what happens if they don't pay them today? Well, then they get letters from 
our office. I mean, so they continue with their business though, even though they really don't have a license? Yeah, it's, they may start the, what, I hate to start the enforcement progress, but they will get a letter and then we have to give them due process in, in sure. so many days to, to, yeah. to comply and then, um, and then we ask our county attorney to help us out with that because it becomes uh, enforcement of the ordinance. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So they're in violation of our ordinance. Yeah, that's my we question. We have to process though. I get a question. Yes, Commissioner. So if you didn't, doesn't a license run out on a certain day? Yes, December. And so tomorrow you would not have a license. Mm -hmm. So how can you still sell when there's, I understand due process for different mm -hmm. things, but I wouldn't think on a license. Uh, right. Does that totally make any understand. Historically, uh, they, 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 they either need to shut down their business until they pay their taxes or if uh, they continue to operate then it gets sent to my office to step in and take enforcement action but uh, I don't know that too close okay. and I, I understand where you're coming from Commissioner Wilson it's just that our ordinance all taxes need to be paid by have to be current and unfortunately those and that's at the end of December 31st yeah. of the current tax year and it would be nice if our licenses were our licenses would end January 31st. Oh, so so you know what I'm saying? Okay, it would they be don't then. Yeah. But they okay, don't. Okay, I got it. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Commissioner Johnson? Johnson? Oh. Yes, one question, okay. Mr. Chair. Now, this is nothing new. This is, it's always been that yes, way. Yes, it's always yeah. been this okay. way. Okay, Commissioner yes. Winston? And I, I recognize that, but is there a penalty for them not having it? You know, what's the incentive to wait, do the whole process? And then all oh, of a sudden, um, they've been assessed a late fee already oh, on okay. their licenses, yes. All right. I'm all right. sure we talked about this before. But. No, that's fine. <laughs> Gentlemen? Mr. Chair, I'm certain that this is really no different than having ex having an expired driver's license. Can I drive on an expired driver's license? Certainly I can. Is it legal? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Once I get caught, I have to pay the penalty of driving with, a dr with an expired driver's license, and then I still have to pay for the renewal to get a current one. Would that not be correct, Brian? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's somewhat similar. They're, they'd have to probably go to court and... Yeah. Pay the costs associated with that, so there's additional expense. Right. And one last Commissioner question, Johnson? Mr. Chair. Uh, all those, uh, they've all been uh, notified. C correct. Um, we currently have one business who has not paid their license, so they have license fees, they've been charged a late fee. We're hoping that they're coming in today. Okay. So that will come to you for approval in January. Okay. Uh, okay. Again, you know, we're hoping that they pay their license. If not, we'll come back after the first of the year and then we'll send out, you know, we'll look at it, the ordinance and start, yeah. you know, um, enforcing the ordinance where they're, okay. if we could make them close the doors. But again, we want to keep our businesses mm -hmm. going, so we yeah. do have due process. And just, yeah. we've been on the phone calling them and they said, yeah, we'll get it in, we'll get it in. So okay. I thought if their fees are paid, we'll get that to you next, the first meeting okay. in January. Other questions, information, gentlemen? It's kind of kind of interesting that that we all know that to operate in certain capacities it requires licenses, you know whatever we do. I mean, and it's it's just strange to me that people who would have licenses and those licenses are required to do business would not be forthcoming in getting this stuff done on time. Yeah. So that it concerns me. Anyways, uh, do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. All right, Commissioner, what's your motion? And a second, Commissioner Wilson. Further discussion. Having heard none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. 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 We'll see you next year. <laughs> so the next is, again, as another environmental health. Um, it's, so in order for uh, environmental health to be local, um, we have to have we have to have backup agreements so that in case we don't have staff, that we have backup from another county to um, step in and do our work in the meantime. And um, Partnership for Health, uh, on behalf of Clay County, is um, getting a new, a delegated water service. This is a new thing for them. We're the closest county that has a delegated water service. Therefore, they're asking us to be their backup. So this would be to enter into a memorandum of agreement with Partnership for Health on behalf of Clay County to back them up for their delegated water services and also for them to back us up for delegated water services. 
Gentlemen, questions? Okay. No, we talked about it at uh, planning. Mm -hmm. I'd so move on that. I'll second that, Mr. Chair. I have a motion and a second. Further discussion? I just got one Commissioner thing. Wilson. Mm -hmm. I like that when we have backup for everything that we do because if something happens here, there's someplace else that can help us take care of things and vice versa. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Jelinski. Mr. Chair, and I wonder if Katie can explain why we're going so far away. Clay County is a, a little ways away right. as opposed to a Todd County, Wadena, Crow Wing, right. Stearns, yep. Mille Lacs, whatever, yep. for, for this partnership. And prior to you answering that, I'm absolutely in favor of this because I believe that when counties can work together and share resources in a time of need, and that's what this is, yeah. that, that it's a win-win all the way around. But if you could explain yeah. the, the distance, that would be. So uh, there's a few different types of services that environmental health offers. The delegated water services is different than your food, beverage, and lodging. So Stearns, uh, Todd County, we do theirs. But Stearns County, Wadena County, all these other counties do not have a delegated water program. Okay. MDH, or Minnesota Department of Health, does their delegated water program for them. Okay. So we are the closest delegated water program to Clay County. Yep. Very good. Thank you. And this could be something we could just let the state do, correct? However, it could be taken over by the state. We correct. choose to do that because local control, from our perspective, is better. Correct. All right. All right. Further discussion? Having heard, and all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And the last um, request I have is um, we have a vacancy in our Nurse Family Partnership Program. It's an evidence-based um, home visiting program for high-risk uh, mothers. Um, we, um, I brought this position to, we had a vacancy also in July. That person has um, left. And so we've had some difficulties in the past hiring and retaining PHNs. We meeting all counties. Um, it's not something unique to Morrison County. Um, um, Local Public Health Association and also our central director, direct, central directors are looking um, at different things that we can do to recruit and retain PHNs, but at this point it's still somewhat of an issue because of the um, difference in pay for public health nurses at the government level and then private. Um, so what we're requesting is to post the public health nurse position for the Nurse Family Partnership, both internally first and then externally, and then backfill any positions that may result and requesting that there's some flexibility in the starting salary, depending on the candidate, their experience and qualifications, of course, um, to and to deviate from that starting pay policy to try to find a qualified public health nurse for this position. Gentlemen? Mr. Chair, yes. we discussed this too about this. Is there any way you, know, you have to have a PHN public health nurse? Right. An RN, would that work, or do we, is that not going to be able, if somebody just has an RN degree, and we could say, okay, we would maybe, you know, help them get their PHN if uh, they stay employed for two, three, ten years or whatever, is that a possibility? You know, um, we've done that in the past where we've posted the position, we've posted it actually as a public health nurse, but then in in the actual in the actual posting we would explain, you know, we would take a registered nurse that is willing to get their public health nurse certificate. And we've had, in, you know, in recent years, at least two nurses who have come in as registered nurses and have went on for school to get their uh, public health nurse certificate. Uh, the Minnesota Department of Health State is offering um, a reimbursement program, a tuition reimbursement program. It's, I mean, it's not a lot of money, but it is something, and so that that's, also a resource that we're gonna market saying, you know, there is this money here to help pay for some tuition to get that public health nurse. And this is, some, Mr. Chair, yes, this is something that we need to have, Correct. this position. Well, we have our Nurse Family Partnership Program. We currently do that with Todd, Wadena, and Cass County. Um, you know, we've always had a commitment to maternal child health and to seeing those high-risk moms and babies in our county. 
and um, you know it's it's a very good program. It helps a lot of it helps a lot of mothers become more self sufficient and um, you know helps them bond with their baby. Helps them you know try to get into school or get a job. I mean it's it's that you're helping them out at the beginning of their baby's lives. So. Um, you know, we currently have the program. We want to fill the position. It's a win-win all the way around, except for the fact that we really can't get anybody, as of late, to bite into being a member of the staff here in Morrison County or any county around us, as we learned in our planning meeting. Yeah. Right. It's not right. just this position. You know, that was one of the reasons we had be, um, be, came up with the, you know, ideas for even our case management where we opened up to social workers mm -hmm. because we just can't find public health nurses. Yeah. It's just, it's yeah. difficult. Okay. okay. One last thing, Mr. Chair. Sure, sure, sure. LPN is definitely out to say, okay, we'll right. train you to be a public nurse. That doesn't work. Out. The requirements of the Nurse Family Partnership Program um, coming from their, their National Service Office is a four-year Bachelor of Science in Nursing Registered nurse. <laughs> Want to come work for us, but. <laughs> Gentlemen? Yeah. Yes, Commissioner Wilson. Well, we had a long discussion about yeah. this at planning yeah. session, okay. and it's just a matter that there's not that many people to pick from, right. and all the yeah. other counties were having the same issues that yeah. we're having. So yeah. I hope we can find some out. Yep. Yeah. With Commissioner Johnson. With that, we, you know, like I say, Mike just said we talked about it, so with that, I would make a, make a motion on that. To approve that. I have a motion on the floor. I'll second it, Mr. Chair. And a second. Further discussion. I guess I got to weigh in on this, and, and we had a lot lengthy discussion, and I think we were on this for probably half an hour in our planning session. And, and being a nurse and, and having worked in this field and, and a counselor and knowing the healthcare profession as well as I do, it concerns me greatly that the state and federal government require a certain level of expertise for a position, okay, and that there aren't the numbers of people out there to fill those positions. As we age, and we're all here sitting up here in this front except these two young ladies, <laughs> are, are in the baby boomer You're category. You're having this, buddy. Not you, Ryan, <laughs> are in the baby boomer category, and, and we're getting so many more and more people that are needing care and services. and, and there's not enough nurses to go around, and that's what this is about. So um, we, we've got this big nursing home going up here that's going to just, I mean, they're just struggling to find people to fill these new places, train people to be able to work with people. And, and it concerns me that we have these requirements that the state mandates, but yet there aren't the numbers of people out there to fill those positions. And then, of course, what this is doing is ramping up. We have to pay to get good people to fulfill the needs that we have for, for the requirements to, to get the grant funding. That concerns me because where does this end? Because we're not we're not going to see less and less need for PHNs, for RNs, whatever, LPNs, nursing assistants. We're not going to see that with the baby boomers aging the way they are. So, I, my concern is that the costs keep going <laughs> keep going up for us to compete to bring someone in that has to fill this position. So, uh, in my discussion earlier, I really suggest we look at will the state become more lenient, or can we work with the state to maybe fill this position with an RN without a four-year PHN degree, or to look at how can we fill positions like this with people that, if there's nobody there, I mean, what happens next week if there's none? There's not enough left, mm -hmm. so, I mean, we can't pay them $100,000 each to come in and be a PHN. You mm -hmm. see, so that concerns me. So at some point, the state really needs to get on board and start addressing this issue. You know, I, I really feel that. Go ahead. Uh, so that's the bigger issue and yeah, yeah, yeah. it's something that our local public health association has been working on for yeah, years yeah, yeah. Um, and we're, we're, we're trying to work with our colleges and universities to and part of it is that you, they're not cranking out enough nurses in general um, one of the you know in the state the state has taken some feedback and that's I'm, that's, I'm guessing where the uh, tuition reimbursement even if it's a small amount has come from and it's just a very baby step however hopefully it's a it's a step in the right direction mm -hmm. and hopefully we can you know go from there and continue to work with the state on addressing the issue right and my wife's an RN and my mom was an RN so I'm very aware of this this 
position that it becomes in where a three-year degree or a two-year degree in RN can't fill these positions, which, you mm -hmm. know, concerns me. It would be nice if we could bring them in and then train them to do the job. That would be so much better, I think. So, Mr. Chair, the only yes. problem that I would have with that is, is we can bring anybody in, train them, and say, and as soon as they're trained, bye-bye, I'm going somewhere else. That That's... Well, no, what I'm saying, bring a, bring a two-year RN is, or a three-year RN, diploma RN, and, and train them to do the position. Because they are RNs, and they have an RN license, and that's what I'm getting at. I'm not saying just bring anybody in. Not an LPN to do a PHN job, an RN no. job. But, and, and, and I'm agreeing with yeah. what you're saying. I understand what you're yeah. saying, but I, I think what we would find ourselves running into a, a loophole is that now that they're, they've got the rest of their certification, of course, there's nothing stopping anybody from leaving anywhere and moving on. at any time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's probably something that you just, that's part of life, I suppose, at right. the same time, right. too. Right. Commissioner Wilson? Mr. Chair, um, the real uh, just of this is that we may have to start somebody a little higher up on the scale than we normally would bringing somebody in, mm -hmm. but we're not going to go over what our top scale is. But we might have to bring somebody in at a little higher level right. in order to get somebody because there's not that many people out there. Right. That's the bottom line. Yep. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Further discussion? Having heard that, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I just want to mention uh, the Public Safety Recognition Conference, uh, the sheet that I had handed out yep. to you. Um, every year the Public Safety does this recognition dinner uh, to recognize our um, emergency people that volunteer in the county. This year we have um, been working with Pat Boone, the fire chief at uh, Camp, Ripley. Camp Ripley, and he. Um, we've been working on bringing in a speaker, and uh, she is from the Brookfield Police Department, uh, where she was a dispatcher for the, long time. the Sandy Hook, yeah, she, she was a dispatcher for a very long time, and she was a dispatcher during the time of the Sandy Hook Elementary shooting. Mm -hmm. So she will be coming and speaking. Um, the first part of the uh, recognition dinner is going to be um, dinner for our emergency uh, people and then the recognition piece. But then we're opening up the speaker to surrounding counties or the sheriff's department or law enforcement and other people that would like to sit in on that speaker. So I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that and if there's any questions um, our emergency preparedness or EMS coordinator in our department can take those questions. And her, Emily Center and her information is at the bottom. And we're all invited to that. And you are all invited and they would um, asking that the, if the commissioners would like to hand out the awards again this year. Yeah. 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 Mr. Chair. Excuse me. I'm no, sorry. Mr. No, Wilson. No, Commissioner Wilson. Um, I know that the NJPA has paid for training for like firefighters, uh, policemen, some training. And I know we had talked about doing it for the um, emergency medical people. Right. Do you know where that's at? Or? So myself and Pat Boone, the fire chief, okay. and our community health services um, supervisor, Michelle Tell, just have been working on this with NJPA. At this point, um, we have been, we are continuing to work out the best proce procedure yeah. and the best, um, you know, the application process for this and what we're going to cover, the classes we're going to cover. So we're, we're trying to flesh all of that out and we're, um, we're getting to that point and we're hoping in the next month or two that we're going to know exactly okay. um, how that works. It sounds like it's a go. We yep. just don't know the details at this point. Yep. Commissioner and that was, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I sorry. Right. That was um, hopefully... Uh, if everything works out the way we want it to start, um, NJPA's cycle, which is July 1st of okay. 2016. Jeff? I was just going to comment, I guess, that Pat Boone, although the fire chief at Camp Ripley is the chair of this in particular committee, mm -hmm. and, you know, this committee goes back many, many years to being a first responder committee, really, and that's how it actually kind of started out many, many, many years ago. And those first responders, I guess I'm talking about, are the farmers, the beauticians, the mechanics, the grocery workers, whomever they are, that respond to any event, if you will, at any hour on any day. And, and number one, it's recognition, and I understand that wholeheartedly, but it also has developed into a training conference at the same time also. Uh, very well worth 
the time for those that are involved in this. I mean, it's, it's huge. And what has happened, besides those first responders, as I'm going to refer to them as, the mechanics, the housewives, the house husbands, the dairy farmer, whomever it is, that, that's that first responder. This is incorporated now to not only those folks, all of our fire, all of our police, all of our EMS, the entire group that, that's on, involved with this thing. I think it's just huge that we participate in this. Any other discussion? Well, one other piece about the NJP funding is, um, so FIRE has... Um, a funding source to help pay for trainings but one of the issues that you know we were hearing out out in the community was it can be kind of expensive to keep your training up and to keep your CPR up or your EMR up and so this funding from NJPA will hopefully um, help balance that a little bit so that our volunteer people who are our you know beauticians and mechanics um, will still help provide those services and they don't have to pay out of their pocket for them. Yes. I know as NJPA discussion, um, we, we do that with the firefighters and so forth. Yes, they would probably be reimbursed by the cities or counties or whatever for their services. But um, we do think it's real important to try to help uh, these other people so they don't have to defer the cost. But like you say, you're working out details. And one thing I've learned, details is a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot you of work. know, when you try to give money away, you, you need to have a way to figure out how everything's going to work and stuff so and JP has keep, been wonderful at that keep working with them because we'd really like to see this program go through and if this program does go through I just want to make sure I mention that it isn't just for Morrison County it's for our region 5 so it's growing yeah. Cass Wadena Todd and Morrison whenever we talk about NJPA and decisions that we're making we always have we cannot even present anything that does not involve all four counties five, because that, five, 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 yeah, that's five how counties. That's how uh, they work. So when we have it, the other counties have that ability too. But this is such a good program because Jeff's right. The money comes out of the people's pockets that uh, are doing it, plus they're doing the work, and it would be yeah. nice to be able to help with that training. Yeah. So, All right. Good. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. Right. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Glenn. Our assessor. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning. I have uh, one abatement application to bring to you this morning on a travel trailer. Uh, the owner has recently uh, contacted our office and provided us with documentation that he, in fact, does have 2015 tabs on the property. Uh, therefore, it should not be valued or taxed uh, as personal property. And I am recommending approval of the abatement. Okay. I'd shall move on then, Mr. Chair. I'll second. A motion a second. Further discussion? Having heard and all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thanks, Glenn. Board, have anything for me? Wow. That was pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> that was fast. Happy New, New Year. Year. Yep. No, Happy, Happy New, New Year, Glenn. Glenn. Thanks. Yeah. You too. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, you guys Glenn. Nice Thank, you. Yep. Thank you very much. <laughs> Auditor's report. Morning, Deb. Morning. Steve just stepped out. I'm not sure what order we have things in. Uh, <laughs> well, what there he is. Discuss? We can find Steve? <laughs> He's stepping back in. <laughs> Sorry. I just had to tell Katie a good luck at those nurses. I just, <laughs> I was just reading last night, my daughter talking to her that uh, Sanford is building that new hospital in Fargo, yep. and they're offering like $20,000 signing oh. bonuses to get nurses on, our hands on time. Oh, wow. mm. yeah, and that becomes a problem. There you go. Just, and then... Yeah. They're going to do it, then Centra Care is going to do it, then you got, I mean, yep. it's just yep. an ongoing yep. thing. Yep. 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 Well, good morning. I got a couple items and something that just came in that I'll take care of uh, at the end. Um, the first thing I like to do is uh, just have to prove this is our annual where we approve our assigned and restricted and committed fund balances. It's a requirement of our policy that we do this. Um, the one that I handed out, there was one change to it, and the, um, the sheriff is going to do some assign some money for his STS. He has a vehicle he has to replace, and so he wants to use some of those funds to carry forward and continue to do that. And he has the funds there, and I'm not sure exactly what the exact amount is at this time. I won't know that till the end of the, till, 
probably next Monday. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so as you got, there's a list here. That one is just added to it. Um, the rest, there's no, no, a, no additions other than the, that one there, and the rest are all pretty much the same. So, Mr. Chair, I'll approve the restricted and committed fund balances for 2000. We'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. All right. Second. And a second. Further discussion, gentlemen. Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Zelensky. Steve, I wonder if you can remind me what and explain, besides remind me, what is GASB? What does that mean? Governmental Accounting Standard okay. Board. Okay, very good. And then that means that we have so much money set aside somewhere. Can you kind of explain that a little bit? Well, these are just funds that we assign for specific projects. Just kind of how you'll be talking about a phone system. We have some yep. reserve funds that, now it doesn't say phone system reserve here, yep. but we've got a capital equipment reserve. We've got some compliancy money. We're going to kind of pick from a number of these that we've put money aside over the years to pay for things so that we're not levying new money okay. all the time okay. to, to pay for things. We're going to use some of the, these, these reserves to do that with. Very good. So and that's what this is doing. It's setting them aside. Um, bonding companies look at this as a strength um, when look, and issuing debt because they will look at what our reserves are and how we manage them. And we're in a good spot. And good. so our rating is pretty, is our, our rating is good. And so to continue to do this is, is, is only a positive. <laughs> Commissioner Wilson? I'd just like to thank, uh, I knew, I'm new on this board this year, but I'd like to thank this board and past boards for doing this. Because it's good when we have money set aside to take on big projects and stuff. And we don't have to go out to the taxpayers all the time. It's kind of figured into the budget. And that's the way it is. So. I mean, we've done a number of these. I mean, Steve, too, out at the landfill putting those cells in. I mean, they're not cheap, and if yep. we don't put some money aside to do that, that's a big hit in the year. If we have to levy for that new money every year to do that, yeah. that's a huge good, impact. Good management yeah. skills. It's part of doing business to keep things up. Yep. yep. Other discussion, guys? Roll call vote. Commissioner Wincher? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Jelinski? Aye. And aye. All right, and the other item I have is a, is a resolution that uh, the state auditors recommend that we do. I believe our policy that we have in place is fine, but this is going to give us a couple of years to test it out and see if it is fine. There's new standards with, with federal awards of grants, and they're requiring certain things to be done. And, you know, we're following the state statutes as far as purchasing and the bidding process and different things like that. But when they come in and audit us now, they're... They're going to be looking for more things, and we're going to test that policy. And it may have to be tweaked, possibly. But this gives us a two-year extension, 16 and 17, to get it right. And that's all this is really doing. And like I said, it may be, have to be tweaked a little bit. I, I don't know for sure. Um, I'm not the one that's sending out the grants. I'm, I'm going to have to work with uh, you know, the, the sheriff and public health and social services when they're applying for these federal dollars that to make sure that the language is right in it that we, we get this taken care of. So, Gentlemen, and it's just a resolution okay. to do that. I would so move on that, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion. Having heard that, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Too. And one thing that just came over: um, the sheriff brought some money over. It's some money from the exchange club. I think we always have to accept these as a as a board because they can't accept them on their own these gambling funds, and so we have a donation from the Exchange, exchange Club for the SWAT program, and also a th that's $1,500 and $1,000 for the chaplaincy program. And so right. they pass through us, and then the sheriff has access to those funds for those okay. programs. But you have to accept these yep. as... I would so move on that to accept that, Mr. Chair. I'll second that. I have a motion to second further discussion. These funds are so helpful with these different units and, and important oh, to, to the ongoing support of those of those activities. So, all right. Having heard none, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. They just brought it over. I just wanted to get it into the into <laughs> the year. So. <laughs> Thank you. Steve. Thank you. Happy New Year, much. Happy New Year. All right. You too. Thank you. Thank those organizations that do donate yes. to us. Yes. That's very yeah. important. Yes. Steph, anything else? There we um, yeah. I think we have um, the agreement up next. The right. agreement. To the, right. the, state. the state office. For the, the state auditors. For one year? Yes. 
<laughs> I, I have copies question. if you guys want to look at the agreement. So it's just for one. It's not the three right. that we're going to be recording. This is just for the current year. We did. Yeah, um, so so just if you want to look at a written copy. Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Jelinski. Yeah. What have you learned throughout the state? If you, have you learned anything throughout the state as to other counties, how they're handling this? We did have a few more counties go out for private um, bid this year. Um, most of the counties are still going with the state auditor's office. Um, everybody's bucking the three-year contract, yep. and, and yeah. as far as I know, very few people signed that three-year contract that yep. they tried to send around. Um, so what most people are doing is just signing this agreement that's coming out right now. Um, the state does work in like a three-year cycle, but that doesn't mean we have to sign that yep. three-year contract that they were trying to push down our throats. <laughs> Um, so really what we're kind of doing is just kind of taking a wait-and-see attitude, and that's what most of the other auditors in the state are doing also. Okay. Um, kind of um, play it by ear, and I think there's going to be quite a few auditors going out for bid over this next summer to kind of see what the rates are. Um, maybe do some comparison, and you might see a few more going out private bid, um, private companies next year. So... Gentlemen, other discussion? Okay. On a one-year deal, I would so move on that, Mr. Chair. I have a motion from Commissioner Johnson. And a second. And a second from Commissioner Winter for the discussion. Well, bringing to discussion what I'd like, Deb, is I would like you to do some research this next year on, on, the, on the counties that go out for bid. And it's all public, I'm sure, okay? So mm -hmm. to find out how that's faring between the state costs and the private costs. Could you do that, find that all out as yeah. we go here throughout the year and in, so that when it comes back to us looking at this again, that we can take a look at that mm -hmm. from, a, from a perspective to see how much savings we could do if we decided to go with a private company. Yeah, most auditors are very open about um, the costs and how things are going, and so what we'll do is we'll do a survey mm -hmm. um, come midsummer sure. and see who's doing what and what the costs are. And and I believe there were some counties that were given specific permission before this new law Correct. was implemented this spring that were doing it already anyways. Yes. So there might be some, some look at that as well. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it would be good just to have all the information to bring to us when we make that decision again to relook at this contract next year. Yeah. And, Mr. Chair, yes. uh, and, and I, that's a great point. The challenge is, though, if you have a private one, that the state still can require an audit. Correct. And, you know, it's like... If they don't know, agree with yeah. anything they yeah. say... Sure. Yes, Commissioner. Yeah, when you do comparison, are all counties about the same? I mean, if we had a bid, are all bids from the state? Let's, I don't know, you know, they're this amount of money? Or it's probably more of what you, well, you explained to me. Uh, yeah, I mean, Mr. Chair, Mr. Wilson, um, it's going to depend on which audit team is going in. Every audit team is going to be just a little bit different and look at different items. Um, it's going to depend on what they find when they go in. So you may not have a, a good comparison across counties. Um, counties of similar size may be about the same amount, but they may not, depending on what else they have going on in their county. So I guess that was my point. It might be a little hard to compare just because Todd County is this much. Right. And we are yeah. this much. It may be hard to compare unless you know the real details of what an auditing firm is doing. And I would disagree with that from the perspective that you look at percentage and difference based on the county. As far as if, if I'm saving 20% and I'm Hennepin County, sure, Hennepin, the state auditor, is probably going to charge them 500000 and us <laughs> 50000 okay, because of the size of the county. But if you look at percentage of saving over going private and right. staying local, I think that's what I would be looking for. I think for. we can kind of look at before and after, you, you maybe. See what, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that would be for me to know what the percentage is because you can't determine how many hours in, in each county because they're all different. But I think right. percentage of savings between going private and staying with the state w w is what I would be looking for. And Mr. Chair? Commissioner Jelinski. I have no issue with checking to see no. if, if, if someone's going to be able to do this in a more cost-effective manner. However, I have to agree with Commissioner Wilson, or Commiss Commissioner Wincher. I think we all have to. The bottom line is, is that if we have Auditor XYZ come in and do our books to the tune of 50000 or whatever, just pick a number, I don't care, whatever the cost is, 
for the state then to be able to have the power to say, no, nope, we're coming and doing it anyway for an additional 50. I just don't understand how you can ever come out ahead on something like this. Well, in, in my response to that would be, then you look at the counties who have been doing this, okay, and how many times has the state had to come in and, and re-audit after their, they have hired their audit? Because if it's not an issue, if it is an issue, a big deal where they're coming in yeah. anyways with all of these. If not, if it hasn't been an issue, I know. think then we also have to ask that question. Yep. Besides what, what you just got Agreed. to explain, Agreed. how many times has the state come back to you to say we need to re-audit? Right. Very good point. Exactly. But, but even if it was one time, it's kind of like, what? Did we just throw X number of dollars into the garbage to have the state just say, to have the power to come back and say, we're doing it again? Right. The same thing? I, I, and they, it's a question to me. Uh, Mr. Chair, they shouldn't be able to come in and do the same thing, but they could come in and audit something that they didn't agree with or an yeah. additional piece. Sure. So. Yep. Not a good discussion. Yeah. All right. We have a motion and a second, I believe. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? Having heard that all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, Deb. We have warrants and yes. agree to pay the bills, all of them. Second. I would like to add one more bill before you do that. <laughs> um, we have a bill from Katie Kirchner for $277.15 for her um, mileage. I'll amend my motion and add that. No all problem. Right. All right. Yep. Motion and second. Further discussion, gentlemen? Roll call. Commissioner Jelinski? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Winchester? Aye. Aye. All right. I believe that's it. That's it, Deb. Thank you. Thanks, Happy New Year. Have a great New Year, Deb. Public Works, Steve, come on up. Come on down or whatever. Bob Barkey's six hundred and forty-four dollars. <laughs> Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Good morning gentlemen. Okay. What are we buying? is in your machines. <laughs> Otherwise we can we can find. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. members of the board, we have uh, included <coughs> in this handout um, applications for license renewals for solid waste haulers and recyclable haulers in the county. These are all uh, reapplications that have complied with the Morrison County Solid Waste Ordinance uh, and submitted all their documentation. Uh, we would request that the board would author us to issue licenses to those listed um, here contingent on that they are current with their Morrison County real estate taxes. That would be the first sheet. I'll make a motion on that. Motion and a second. Yep, waiting for the second. Is that a second? Oh, second. Please. Mr. Johnson, seconds. Further discussion, gentlemen. So, some of the uh, some of the haulers listed as solid waste haulers may be recyclable haulers, but they only have to license to the higher level. Okay. Okay. Further discussion, gentlemen? Having heard that, all those in favor? Aye. All those motions carries. Next. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, the second sheet, we have a couple of things. Uh, the first is uh, two recycling facilities that have made application, have been inspected, and meet the requirements of the Morrison County Solid Waste Ordinance. And we are recommending that the board would issue or authorize the department to issue licenses to those two facilities contingent their current on their Morrison County real estate taxes. So move. Second. Motion to second. Further discussion. Having heard none, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. The uh, the second half of the uh, page uh, has listed uh, two facilities at Camp Ripley um, that. Uh, our ordinance was adopted in 2003. Uh, these two facilities uh, were 
um, compliant and uh, followed the Morrison County Solid Waste Ordinance from that time uh, up through 2015. Uh, unfortunately, here in 2016, Camp Ripley's uh, leadership determined that the Morrison County Solid Waste Ordinance does not apply, and they have not allowed or scheduled inspections of their facilities, nor have they made application for a reissuance of licenses for these two facilities. Um, so we also received on uh, December 29th from the environmental program manager uh, that they would suspend any inspections and, and no longer would pay f the fees for these facilities. So at this point in time, what we would be doing is following um, our procedure that, that we would, uh, for any other normal facility that's not compliant with our ordinance, and that would be to turn that over to the county attorney for his review and future recommendation to the county board on how we pursue, uh, proceed to uh, resolve this matter. Gentlemen? So are you asking for a motion to refer this on to the county attorney? I'm, this is basically information for the board in that these facilities have always been licensed by the board. They no longer uh, uh, have determined they no longer are going to do that. I think that we will be bringing forward uh, as a department as with the county attorney some recommendation on how this needs to be addressed. Mr. Chair? Commissioner Jolinski. <laughs> is this not like any violate? Is, this is no different than any other violation. We went through earlier with uh, Katie and public health for licenses that contingent upon paying real estate taxes or whatever it might be that they needed to to keep their establishments open, um, these this organization is not following the ordinance. Is that not correct? In our determination, they're not following our ordinance. No. Correct. The right. issue the issue that's on the table is whether they have to or not as a as an, another governmental organization. Then I don't. In my opinion, I don't believe we have a choice other than it needs to be forwarded on to uh, our county attorney and, and go from there. Mr. Chair, Mr. one Johnson. question for Steve. The, this ordinance that we have right now started in 2003. Is that what you said? <clears throat> yes. 2003. And my question would be, there was never any problem before, and now all of a sudden there is, you know, over the last 12 years. So, okay. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Wilson. The real legal question of this, do they need to abide by our ordinance or don't they? Yeah. That's the only legal yeah. question that we really answering here, right? Right, that's the issue. If they get a determination that they don't need to by some other court or whatever, then it's fine. If they do, yep. then they have to. Yep. So, okay. And Mr. Chair, yes. just based on this email and that sort, you know, it kind of looks like they want to become independent, you know, do what they, uh, so they don't have to answer to the county's ordinance or whatever, that they just uh, do as they may. So I, I also agree that we should have our county attorney take a look at it and Go from there. And gentlemen, I need to make a statement, and, and my concern with this is that we have had federal and state agencies in the past that have done things that have polluted and contaminated our state or country because they are such entities, and that concerns me that when we lose local control, and I, from my perspective, I, I believe they need to follow our ordinance. That would be my perspective, and I know a judge would probably determine that, but I mean, I'm concerned that 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 uh, there isn't some local control on what's being put on the soil and and how this stuff is being disposed of. So, and my concern has been, I think it's been stated that if they bring in stuff from other areas or, or whatever. So, um, you know, that concerns me. So, but if it's not our if it's not our responsibility and that's determined, then fine. But yeah. at this point, and then they've been following through with this and licensing annually for the last 12 years. Yeah. You know, so and poof this comes up. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. All right. Okay. Very Thank good. You for the information. Looks like you see your hand. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, the next action item for your consideration is a jurisdictional change on a mile of Pierce Township Road. Just so that we get our Locations correct. Over the last number of years, the, the county had taken the position that um, 
we were not going to deal with jurisdictional changes on our system, and that was mainly driven by the economic downturn and some of the financial uh, restrictions and constraints that we were dealing with. I think since that time, things have uh, changed a little bit where, where we are not uh, nearly as rigid as we were at that point in time. And uh, the, uh, the Pierce Town Board came forward to the department and through Commissioner Wilson, uh, proposed a jurisdictional change on a mile of road in which the traffic volumes far exceed what other township roads in, in our county and in this area carry. It is a one mile segment uh, between County State 8 Highway 38 and our County Road 251. If you continue to the north where it's shown on the map, that, that goes directly uh, by the Piers Golf Course and their uh, recreational area, just uh, for location purposes. So we, uh, we have uh, are been in discussions with the Pierce Township Board of Supervisors and have made a determination that this uh, meets criteria where it does comply and would qualify as a county road, probably better than, than a number of county roads that currently are on our system. And so what we have, uh, what we've negotiated with them is that they would uh, obtain the right of way for uh, uh, any construction work and future maintenance of that mile of road that we would have to deal with as a county once we take it over. We would provide uh, the technical and engineering uh, expertise to provide them with the easements that they would have to obtain. Once those uh, were obtained, we would rec put the road in our program and reconstruct it or construct it to our, our standards and surface that road within some time frame of, of our five-year plan. And the township would provide us with $150,000 or 25%, uh, whichever is greater in the cost of doing that. And so our recommendations department is that we would enter into this agreement with uh, Pierce Township to move forward with this jurisdictional change on this one mile of, of uh, 270th Avenue. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Wilson. Just a clarification, you said 150,000 or whichever is greater. Is 150,000 the max? Yes, I'm sorry, 25% or 150,000. Right, okay, I thought that was turned around a little bit, so uh, thank you. Yes, the but max they will pay would be $150,000. And if I'm not mistaken, the road count on this road, because it does kind of go to the high school, there's kind of a trail right there, and there there was a count of about 300 cars during yes. school time going well, on. This the road. last count that we conducted for the township was over 300 vehicles a day, um, which is is a pretty high count uh, for, a it's a very high count for a township road. It would be an intermediate count for a county road system. I'll make, I'll make a motion on this. Second. And a second. Further discussion, gentlemen. I would have some further discussion from the perspective that, uh, I mean, making changes and doing new things and adding more roads to the county system is, is an option we've had. And in fact, a number of years back, a couple of years back, the state proposed that we look at 115 and 238 to take from the state and, and put in the county jurisdiction. So, I mean, these are things that we're faced with or we look at frequently, okay? So, um, go ahead. One Steve. of the things I think that as a, as a county board it needs to be considered is the overall transportation system, even though they may not be under our jurisdiction of what is beneficial to the county as a whole, that's part of this. Um, the, also, the other thing is that uh, oftentimes I think we get hit up where they, the other local units may want us to take things over just take it over because we don't want to have to contend with it or deal with it or cost too much for us. Right. In this situation, Pierce Townships come forward. They have, this is quite a bit of, of uh, revenue that they're going to have to provide towards this project also. Yeah. Um, and so I think they have quite a bit of skin in the game here. Uh, and, and that also, I think, m provides and makes a little bit of a difference on how we uh, deal with it. All right, so we're getting some stuff. Anyways, other discussion, gentlemen? Having heard that, all those in favor, is this a roll call for road? I think it'd be good if you did. Okay, Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Jelinski? 
Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Winter? Aye. And aye. Motion carries. Hey, thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the next resolution is a request for a speed zone study and traffic investigation on County Road 203. Uh, this was brought forward by a constituent through Commissioner Maurer in which uh, the County Road 203 is a segment between uh, Lake Alec and Lake Chaminade that runs between uh, U.S. Highway 10 and our County State 8 Highway 1. Uh, we did a, a preliminary investigation with our own staff. It doesn't qualify for an urban section design where the county could establish a speed zone through, through there on their own. It requires that the state of Minnesota, through their district traffic engineer, conduct a study and make a recommendation on what the prudent and reasonable speed zone through this area would be. Uh, in order to accomplish that, the county board has to request it. And so we're asking that the board would adopt this resolution and we will have them uh, conduct the investigation and see what the speed zone should be through there. So moved. Have a motion? Second. And second. Further discussion, gentlemen? Mr. Chair? Yes, Commissioner Gentleman. Steve, is there a cost for this besides that? I'm just curious. No. No, it does take them a long time. It would probably be May of next year, I would base, based on previous ones we've asked. So there is no cost or charge to us, but it's a, it's a kind of a long process. And then they do the entire road? They'll do, they'll look at the entire road, but in the end they focus in on the area that has the most access, the most traffic. It will get focused on, but the segment that they want you to request is have those longer termini yep. is what they want us to do when we make the request for this study. Okay, okay. very good, thank you. I don't know, is there any recommendations that when they do some of these speed zones in area that they require those flashing lights telling people how fast they're going? Uh, you know, I don't know if they can or can't, but I know when I drive in those areas a lot of times, you know, you'll have a 30 mile an hour speed limit and it feels like you're out in the country. And people have a hard time driving that a lot of times just because of the awareness factor. Is there any recommendations that they can do in that or is that just because there's a sign down there that says 30? and it may go for two miles? Well, what they will do is they'll, their recommendation will come back meeting the minimum requirements of the, uh, the manual on uniform traffic control devices. Okay. And so there are supplemental things that can be done, but you do not need them to, to tell you to tell do you those. To do okay. Those become things that you can do on your own. Uh, but the manual is basically the law on how you need to sign it to meet the minimum standards. Okay. Other questions, gentlemen? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. Then the uh, the final uh, re resolutions that I'm requesting for board action is uh, we, we are a part of Region 5, and annually we go through a solicitation for projects uh, to be funded through uh, federal dollars that are uh, earmarked for local projects for the region. Region 5 receives approximately $3 million annually. Uh, they are soliciting for the 2020 construction year. Uh, we are requesting that the board would authorize us to submit these three uh, segments of roadway, the first one being Casa 34 from US Highway 10 to uh, Trunk Highway 25, the second one from Trunk Highway 25 to our County State 8 Highway 33, and then the third uh, uh, segment would be the middle segment of uh, the Great River Road. Um, it's between, uh, I believe it's between, uh, let's see, it's between Greenwood and 130th Street, south of Little Falls. So those three segments, and the reason we've selected those three segments uh, are because that they qualify and meet criteria in which uh, federal participation and federal uh, uh, dollars are easier to try to justify and obtain. And so um, for 2020, we just were funded uh, last year, our CASA 39. I think our chances of getting funded in 2020 are difficult. But we would like to submit these projects. We'll continue to submit them uh, until we get something out of them. Okay. I'll move on that. In a second? Yeah, yeah, I'll second with the, again, if we don't apply, you'll never get it. So you have to oh, apply. Oh, yeah, you, I mean, we need, yeah. I'm but but it, is, it is kind of, dis, you know, it being $3 million over yeah. the region, it does get 
distributed and spread out so you don't get a project every year. It right. just, there isn't enough money for it. Um, so, so why do you think, Steve, that we would have a probably a hard time getting this one? Because, because we were the county that was funded last oh, year. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> that answers it. That answers it. Further discussion, gentlemen? Very Steve, good. Steve, in general, um, in 2019, I think we're doing a bunch of overlay with tar and stuff, right? Or am I... We do, we do every year. Every year. We do. Okay, but like 33 and some of those were going to be done in 2019. Is that correct? That, that's, our, that's our plan currently, yes. So is our plan kind of to have a bunch of things ready to do a lot of blacktopping so we get a better price on our blacktop? We always work towards the economy of scale when, we're, when we do our program. Uh, we always are trying to focus in on one area where we can tie as much together as we can uh, for that reason. Um, sometimes it, when you tie bituminous work with culvert work, it doesn't work out so well because the, the type of contractors that are doing that are different. And, and so what we're, we're, we're looking at is trying to tie all of our paving work together as one contract and all of our work that requires dirt moving um, and excavating those type of things in another contract. So we don't have a lot of contracts. We're not bidding every road project separately. We're trying to tie them together uh, so we get one contractor and uh, you know the economies that go with that. I know a few years ago, and I don't know what year it was, 2007 maybe, when the board went out <coughs> to spend a bunch of money to tar roads and stuff because the price of black topping was very cheap at that time. I know the price of oil is down now. Whether it is for black topping, I don't know. It is for gasoline. You know, are we looking at another time when we need to do a bunch of advanced work because of the price of things? Or um, it, it's it's somewhat volatile. When you look at the price of bituminous mixture, which is the main cost in in um, in a project, the what they they produce about the same amount of that asphalt for that type of work, whether the price of uh, oil is high or low. And so it doesn't change, and you're buying that on a tonnage basis, so it doesn't change very much. We haven't, where we do see some reductions is the fact that uh, gasoline and diesel is, is less. So in the transport of it is where you're saving your money. You're not saving this big amount in the production of bituminous mixture that goes out on the road. And so there is some savings. It's probably not as great as people think when they see that, uh, you know, a price of diesel is half of what it was last year. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a savings there. What we will be proposing to the board uh, when we come through with our 2016 program is that we do utilize some of our fund balance, which we have grown, it, it fluctuates up and down to bring that closer to where we normally would see it because the fact it's a good year to do work. Sounds good. Other questions? All right. I have a motion and a second on the floor. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, I believe, isn't it? Commissioner Jelinski? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Wincher? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Aye. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. That's all you have? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Steve, thank you very much. Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Thanks for your work with that, with, with Commissioner Wilson's constituent in my area. That's great. So thank well, you. Appreciate it. Yeah. And it, hopefully that we can get something out of that. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you. Very good. Thank, thank you. See you, Steve. All right. Administrator's report. Good morning, Mr. Chair, County morning. Board. Deb is out on vacation this week and has asked me You're the to administrator sit. today? All right. Yeah. Deb asked me to be here on behalf there you go. as well. There you go. Um, yes, yes, she's asked Ms. Nicole to uh, come and discuss the resolution um, of termination of the CMCC Joint Powers Agreement. Yes. I will turn it over to Ms. Nicole. Yes. Welcome. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Mr. Chair. As you know, and I believe you were all present for the Joint Powers meeting. Yep. Um, at that time, Morrison County had petitioned the Joint Powers to come to a resolution to terminate the Joint Powers Agreement. The Joint Powers voted on that motion and sent it back to the counties, and that's where we now stand with this resolution before you. And we did that why? We did that so 
essentially, Crow and County motion to withdraw from the Joint Powers Agreement. And after discussions, Morrison County thought it best that all parties should be at the table for the dissolution of everything involved with that Joint Powers. So Morrison County um, took the opportunity to make that request of the Joint Powers to terminate the agreement. As Deb likes to say, it was a house that was built for three, it didn't work for two or one, so it made sense to have everyone at the table to clean up the house. So we are at a point now where the resolution of termination is before you. Gentlemen, Mr. Chair, okay. Commissioner Wilson. The real just is that when we terminate this, we're all involved in the bills and everything until everything's dissolved. Absolutely. That way, that way it's clear that everybody's going to pay their share of the bills. When the house is dissolved, we'll figure out how to build it again. Absolutely. Yeah. Mr. Chair, when, and that's Johnson. as of uh, 1 July of 16. That's yeah, correct. Okay, with that, I would make that motion. I'll second it. And I have a second. And Commissioner Wilson said something about rebuilding it again. And this house won't be rebuilt with these same players, so maybe with different players or, we may be on, or on our own. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. just wanted to clarify that. We yeah. just want to make sure that when it's dissolved that everybody pays yeah. their share of the bills so that one don't pull out and the other two got all the bills left. Exactly. Yeah. All and right. Mr. Chair, yes, Cole, we Mitchell. also discussed because there is going to be some money left over once all the bills are going to be, but that's going to be up to you and the management, to, the counties, to decide where the dollar each goes. Well, actually, in the meeting, it said the three administrators right. are getting together yeah, to yeah. figure out how that all washes yeah, out and exactly. then we'll come back to us with a recommendation. That's correct, Mr. Chair. Okay. The okay. three administrators were given the power through the joint powers um, to enact whatever is necessary to um, pay the bills and to terminate and break up the agreement in all three counties and parties. Yeah. All right. So I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Having heard done to, re to dissolve this agreement, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Excellent. I believe it is a roll call. Oh. Commissioner Jelinski. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Wincher. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. <laughs> and I. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank Thank you. New Year. you said I twice. Yeah. See? Yeah. I've said three times. See? You're important. Just twice again. That's right. That's right. Um, yes, and then my next. Have a wonderful New Year, young lady. Thanks, Thank Nicole. you. You too. Yep. My next um, RBA um, is to award the IP based voice communication system bid to Consolidated Communications, formerly known as Inventus for an on-premise Cisco voice over IP phone Please, system to be paid through the fund balance. And Mike and Kurt are here yeah. to help me review some of the technical aspects and reasonings on why we made the decision that we did. Um, just to kind of review again that our um, current system is over 20 years old. Um, we've had some issues a few years ago um, with our voicemail system failing, and so since then, um, and for a period of time, we've been um, putting money aside and knowing that we're going to need a new system someday. So um, in order to find out what the right system for Morrison County would be, we had spoken with um, departments, uh, the kind of features that they would like to see where their softwares were going and what would be the best to move forward with. So. With that, we did an RFP process back in September. Um, we received three different bids. Um, we had received one from um, Schweigel Communications, who currently has our um, phone system now. It's an Avaya system. And then we received one from CTC, um, which is Consolidated Telecom out of Brainerd. And then one from Consolidated um, formerly known as Inventus, so it kind of gets a little confused, so I think we kind of refer to them as Inventus from time to time just yep. to avoid the confusion. So with that, um, our recommendation was to move forward with the Inventus consolidated um, phone system, and uh, we figured it was the best system for what we need for our growth and our expansion. Um, <clears throat> and so then we are asking to award them the, the proposal for, for our new system. At a price of? Um, 
at the price of $497,219.40. Okay. Mr. Chair. Okay. And so that's what the proposal is at this point and might know. Uh, what I was going to say is uh, we should really clarify that yep. as to be a cost not to exceed probably because uh, we've been kind of negotiating that price down as we go based on the, the things that they offered. They they provided, uh, we've uh, kind of heard people talk in the past about these being uh, Cadillac or Chevy or Ford or whatever type of plans. And, um, we should really not use that type of phraseology because really what this is was the best plan of the three that were offered to us. There's many things that could be our needs. much better. To yes, meet our needs. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So I think that's something that's that's uh, really important for us to know. And the other thing to keep in mind is that the, the plan offered included, I believe it was 498 phones for the county based on the number of phones that we have. Well, because of the feature set and the way this system is implemented, there are many of the employees who probably won't even need a physical device. So that cost is going to go down incrementally based on the number of those that we can implement without the actual device. And considering we're going to have some people in the future who are going to be doing things like telecommuting, teleworking, whatever you want to call it, um, I'm guessing that that number is going to be higher than we might have even originally thought. So um, the numbers that are offered uh, for this are definitely higher end. One thing I, I would really like to take a moment and clear up is that um, the way you read uh, what was in the media, you, you need to be a little bit careful, and I want to make sure that people understand that we're not saying that the systems that were proposed by the two vendors that we didn't uh, select are bad. We're just saying that as a county, as a public service entity, that our requirements are probably a little bit higher than what some of theirs are for security, for redundancy, for some of those types of things that were mentioned. And they just didn't meet our requirements. So that's the reason why we might be making those choices. And Mike, would you speak to the main components that we needed that this company offers as such as internal? Sure. Okay. Yeah, one of the one of the big ones for us was redundancy and um, one of the companies had uh, they had hardware redundancy and they had a lot of it. Um, and that's the company up in Brainerd. And what did that what is redundancy? Yeah, I was going to say what is redundancy? Yeah. Redundancy, means, redundancy means redundancy means if you have this piece of hardware, if this fails, it automatically will fail over to this other piece of hardware. Okay. okay. The issue that we have is that as a county business, we need to make sure that if something happens to that building and all of that hardware is unavailable, we still have the ability to be up and running. So they will have their operational stuff located here on our site. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Right, and that's that's a big big. It's, it's huge because that gives us the ability to control how safe, secure, redundant, and failed over our systems are, instead of relying on somebody else, where we don't have any access to their back end system. So that's a very big deal for us. So if they went down, we'd be we'd be down. We'd as, be, yes, we'd have no exactly. And, yep. Go ahead, Commissioner Wilson. And another thing on that, if we have the equipment in our building and a tornado took our building down with the equipment in it, we'd have a backup by their building. Well, their that would be the ideal situation, but the other vendors that we're not selecting do not have that right. option. Right. But right. that's one thing that, that's one of the decisions right. that helped make this decision, that Correct. we have a backup. Because they have the we backup have, there yeah. and we have it here. No, we have the ability to decide where we have the backup. We could we could actually create our we'll be able to design that system okay, really okay, okay. and we'll be able to say maybe it's another county where we can we've done systems like that with other systems that we have imaging systems where if our system goes down uh, Mille Lacs County picks up for us we do that with our imaging system mm -hmm. um, and so we can do that with our phone system and it might be a two or three uh, county type of collaborative that we do but it's just best for us to be in control of how redundant our systems are. So in your meeting with the three the three companies that get, that came in and responded to the RFP, okay, you're meeting with our management team and looking at what we need to provide the necessary services to our constituents, to our county, okay, this would be your recommendation that we accept the one that we're talking about. Yes, it would. Okay. Absolutely. Gentlemen? If yes, I may, we you? discussed this at the planning meeting yeah. also, and I think Beth, correct me if I'm wrong, <coughs> with this company that we have options 
that you kind of said, okay, we want A, B, C, or we don't want D. Could you clarify that for me on this? Is that correct on that? Yeah, you're correct. It would, we have more of an a la carte, uh, more or less. They offer many different services um, that we can take advantage of. Um, and like Mike had mentioned in the planning session, a lot of the systems that we have are Cisco-based, and so that integration with their Cisco system that Inventus has um, allows those to communicate a little bit better um, the fam familiarity yeah. <laughs> with what that system. system is is obviously more redundant for us in order to conduct our business. So it all kind of streamlines, and so we can say, you know what, we're moving towards this. You know what, let's pick this this feature and we're going to go with it or you know we don't really want so much of that we're not you know we're moving away from things. And that would reduce your cost. And also. it reduces mm -hmm. the cost yeah right. so you know right out the gate you know they did um, in their proposal offer this big this big gift you know or present more or less of all these things that they offer and it's like you know we don't really need all of that maybe starting out small we can manage what we have and then we can grow and expand as we need to so it's not we're not buying everything. Sure. All at one time. Commissioner Wilson. Mr. Chair, Mike, um, first of all, I want to go back a little farther when you talked about the system that we have today. Mm -hmm. I, I recall at our planning session you talked about if we wanted parts and stuff for the system today, we may have to go out on eBay almost to get them. Uh, uh, yes, we would, and we have. <laughs> and, and we don't have companies that will back up our stuff, uh, secure our stuff, because it's so old. Right. Okay, and the second thing was... On some of these bids, um, one of the bids I think was $157,000 or something in that neighborhood with $2,500 a month for working with the system. Some additional maintenance so support. when I take that number, that's almost $300,000 over the five years. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas the company that we're talking about, you know, they're at 400 and some thousand. But they would be at three hundred thousand because that's included. It's all included for in five years. For, for the five years, years, five years. Price. there's no yep. monthly fee. So that's yeah. the difference between the one that was absolutely on the bottom and the one that we've got. You know, that's bringing that three when they're really at three hundred versus one hundred and fifty-seven that it looks like right. because of the other stuff. And now we start taking off. We're really not that far apart exactly. on our price for the equipment that we can get. So. There, there's not really any hidden costs, you know. Right. I mean, on the one, there was some hidden costs that didn't know exactly what they were. Exactly. Be. That's okay. that actually with two of them, there were some costs that yeah. we, weren't okay. quite sure. And okay. that's where we as a group looked at it as this one is giving us a worst case scenario. The others are kind of giving us a here's what the base looks like. And okay. if you add features, we're adding costs. Okay. And so okay. we know yeah. our costs won't exceed yeah. this year. We don't necessarily know what our final costs will be on the others until we start meeting and getting site surveys and looking at what features we have to add to these others. Sure. Commissioner hey. Jelinski. Mr. Chair, I, th I think that we, we kind of have to look at the big picture just, just for a second. I truly do. There is no rotary dial telephones anymore. In fact, the two young ladies that are with us today <laughs> probably have never probably used probably one. Probably never, never done. Oh, I've used one. one. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, that was yesterday. We definitely are looking at today, and when we're taking a look at today, and I'm, I'm reading this off of uh, off of my thing here, is that uh, for an on-premise Cisco, first of all, VoIP phone system. Cisco is a piece of hardware. Mm -hmm. It's a manufacturer. But it's a manufacturer, but we have Cisco things within this system. Yes, we do. Uh, currently today. Mm -hmm. Our people have worked with Cisco things doesn't make any difference what that is, but things. I do have one question on today, which goes back a little bit till, to yesterday. VoIP phone systems, in particularly VoIP, V-O-I-P, Voice Over Internet Protocol, I believe I'm right. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to explain VoIP just a little bit and, and what the advantage, disadvantage over Ma Bell and the rotary telephone is. I think that's what we're buying. We're buying a VoIP phone system. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's what it is. A couple of quick things I can tell you. That phone that's hanging on the wall behind Beth yep. is cabled with a cable that has four wires in it. Yep. So it's a four-wire system. Absolutely. All of our computers 
are currently cabled. Well, I see yours is actually plugged into the hardware there, uh, Commissioner Johnson, and there's eight wires in that cable. Well, instead of having both an eight wire and a four wire, wire cable pulled to every single workstation, we only need to have the eight wire. It'll go through the phone and then into the computer. So it reduces our cabling costs. Basically, the phone service is just a cleaner, it's a digital signal, and as we know, the whole world is going digital. Uh, but it's a cleaner, uh, stronger signal because with digital signals you either have a signal or you don't. Um, most of that is going to be an external issue however. But um, it's, it's, I don't know what else to say about it. Basically the, the difference is, is where you had two separate pieces giving you phone and internet service, now you have one. You have internet service that provides you internet and it provides you phone. They both go over the same set of waves essentially. So as far as our building is concerned, they're going to be one system. It makes it easier to maintain, makes it more cost effective, and generally speaking as an industry, they're headed that way because it's cheaper. So, so I'm going to back myself into a corner real quick with, with technology here. I know that I will. VoIP. A number of years ago, if a person had a VoIP system on their computer and could place a phone call via their computer, and let's just pretend it was you, Mike, that you are here with your computer and you're making a phone call. And now you went to Minneapolis, checked into the Hilton for whatever the case is, and you're going to make another phone call on your computer. Years ago, that phone call, if that phone call was to 911, as an example, would tell the 911 operator that you were at the government center, although you're in Timbuktu. Doesn't matter where you are, but you're not here. That has been fixed, has been changed, has been. It's evolved. It okay. definitely has evolved. Um, and I, I, I'm not going to pretend that I know all the details behind it. And I don't know, Kurt, if you know how much so. of the details behind it, but okay. um, it's definitely evolved. And it's, uh, it, your phone basically follows you. You're, that's why the a lot of the voice over IP is, uh, vo voice over IP is kind of tied more to your device or the person rather than a specific piece of hardware that sits on your desk. Knows where you are. That just that technology piece just knows that. Yeah. Very good. Moving forward, Mr. Chair, we need this because we can't get parts for the old one anymore. Yeah. And we need the system that best meets our needs. Right. And that's okay. the bottom yeah. line. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Wilson. Um, another thing that we talked about earlier back in 15 years ago, we had about $1,000 per phone right. in the system that was put in back then. And today we will have about $1,000 per phone. Right. Uh, and the other question that I wanted to ask, and I did before, uh, 911 system in the jail, this does not affect that at all, or it does, or it's um, part of the system that it, we have? It won't necessarily affect that 911 system, but we'll have an interface for it. For and and we'll be, that's actually something that's being considered in uh, the sheriff's plan with their new dispatch center, or with their new E911. And I do system. think the backup is a big part of Huge. what we need, yeah. that that's... Uh, so, that's right. Yep. Gentlemen, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. And a second for the discussion. It's about what the county needs, what we need to do to provide services to our constituents, period. So, that being said, roll call. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Wincher? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Jelinski? Aye. And aye. Motion carries. And, and thank very you guys good information. Yes, for yes. all thank you've you. done on this, the, the, the research, all the research yeah. and, and, and your input is, is very important to help us make the decisions we need to. Thanks, thanks so much for all your hard work on this and for the, the grief you got from a certain I, entity. I got one more comment. Uh, and we do have the money put aside oh, for this. Yes. This right. isn't like we have right. to go out and find the money. Right. That uh, we do have money because we knew this was coming up and the money has been put away to... Finances. It's in the reserves, apparently, and it will come from all the different departments based on what their utilization will be, I believe. Exactly. I think that's what Steve was referring yeah. to. Yeah. Earlier. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. it'll at least go 20 more years, and they'll have this discussion again. When we will. Yeah, hopefully, and we will. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we will. Yeah. 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 You may. You may be <laughs> well, I'll have a few right. less here by then. I'll be yeah. Yeah. Anyways, right. thanks, Happy guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Mike, Kurt, thank you. All right. Do we have anything else? Yes. Mr. Chair, I do have one last item of business. On behalf of the Morrison County Board and Morrison County itself, we had wanted to...
present to you this certificate of appreciation in recognition of your service to Morrison County and serving as our chairman for the year 2015. Thank you. Well, will you welcome. look at that? Oh, I appreciate there you go. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good, and he know, gets to keep the gavel is, too, doesn't he? And you know what? You know what? This is roll call. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, but you know what? Let, let me tell you. Let me speak to this. They spelled your last name right. This is. They did spell my last name right. They didn't do it in granite like they did. Okay. Anyways. I, I want to thank you guys because this has been a real honor for me, uh, being board chair after having worked at the county 14 years and put 24 years into trying to get to this seat. Uh, being county board chair is, 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 is very special to me. So thank you so much and for tolerating and putting up with some of my learning curve and everything else. So uh, I, I very much appreciate it, and this has been an honor. Cool. So, thank you very much. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. Thank you. You're thank you. very welcome. Photo time. On the flag? On mm -hmm. the flag? This is on your own, though, I think. Is it? I think this one should be just Oh, I, no, I think it's with the whole Guys board. Are oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Boy, we want him to be big. Oh, Trust me, he's going to be in the middle. I get to be in the middle, not behind everybody. Big big he will be the big one. We'll put him right up in the front row. Jump along and head to the office. Good job, Kevin. Oh, thank you. Good job, Kevin. Thanks, guys. Well, then, as for the schedules, I did the schedules yes, at time. the last meeting. Yes, so yes, good yes, to go. yes. All right. Uh, we're good to go. We'll wait till Dwayne gets back and we'll adjourn the meeting, huh? We have nothing else? Nope, I don't have anything else for you today. It's been a pleasure working with you guys this last year. Thanks thank for you. all Appreciate the help it. you gave me. Yeah. Yes. I was going to say most of you, but I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I think I mentioned it earlier, I'm not, we're not part of it. No, you are part of it. Everybody's part of it. It's been a good time. Absolutely. I didn't go too bad, Mr. Chair. 10.30. Are we done for you? Oh, yeah, I'm going to make it official. Until Dwayne gets back. Make sure you clean your drawers. We're waiting for you to I come don't back. I don't want to commend you on camera. I got to what are we waiting for? I make a motion that we close the meeting. I need a second. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I wanted to do at least once this year. I thought you said close or adjourn. <laughs> to adjourn. Close, adjourn. You're right. Adjourn. Make sure your desks are clean out because I don't know. We're going to just change our desks. What dates do you need? Don't you need any? No. No. Oh, no. that's right. We did that. We did that. We did that. She just okay. tried double dipping there. She was came after us again. She didn't Perfect. break it down last time, apparently. Good. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. All right. For Have right, a good so day here, guys. Yep. No, Just to uh, recap, we'll have maintenance, move your drawers before Tuesday, Sounds and then good. when the nomination yep. for the new board chair, that yeah, will conduct that meeting. Yeah, you so. got it. Thank you. Yep. You'll be good, good. to go for Tuesday. Good. Thanks, guys. Just, just I want to quote for you guys before we go. Something for you guys to ponder for the new year. Okay. Here, those who have the, those who have the. Uh, uh, let's see here. I got, gotta find, figure this word out. Go ahead. You got time. Jesus, it's that big. Oh, th th those <laughs> who have now he's got the guys, suspense. We got him. Those who have the privilege to know have the duty to act. Albert Einstein. There you go. Isn't that weird? There you go. Sometimes when we know, we don't say We're nothing done. just because. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> that's the proper thing. I know. Do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of weird. So any plans yeah. for New Year's Eve? Yeah. Anywhere? Yeah. 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 Which way do you go to Black? He wanted to give his okay. brother a. Uh, Sean yeah. Jensen yeah. and his yeah. band is playing up there. Oh, that's uh, from Buck. Kenny's. That's Kenny Jensen's boy. Oh, okay. Oh. And then the band that he's with was the one that was on American Idol. One of the groups. Oh, really? On that program. So he's the main. Yeah, so, so, I've got he his wasn't number, I might give him a just to see if they're still in the So yeah. we're going to do that. They were really gung-ho. Oh, neighborhood yeah, Christmas so tonight. Huh? Neighborhood Christmas tonight. Okay. We'll see. Hopefully. Okay. Okay. You bet.
Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Deb. Thanks. And Commissioner Wincher, you were doing what tonight? Did great I'm your first it. year. The wife is heading down to child care. Our other granddaughter, Romy, I have to feed the critters in the morning, so. Come down that. And I'm all staying by yourself. home. I'm Good for you. I wish I was at We don't do, uh, no, I see it before. I think I'm going to nope, we stay yeah. home. All we're going over to the Canadians on Tuesday on Saturday. You got, you got neighbors that are Canadians? Yeah. Or, I'm, <laughs> are you going up top? I'm virtually going across the world. Yeah, they're, they're, okay. they're not going down to Sevs, huh? They're not. But I ain't doing that. Hey. That it's not going down to Sevs, Sevs and Bolas or Buckman. Hell no, they don't, don't have, have a license. license. He's an interesting guy. You know, that really surprises me that you can even sell alcohol the next day if you don't have your license. If your license isn't there. Yeah. Something of that importance. Yes, I don't understand. I know. I, I don't understand.